This is a strength of materials uh, video and we are looking at an assembly that uh, consists of three titanium bars and we also have uh, another bar AC which is a rigid bar. The cross-sectional area of these three rods that are made of titanium are given and also we have a force at point F which is six kips. They want us to determine the horizontal displacement of point F after this force is applied. Well, one word is very important in this description and that is that rod uh, AC is rigid. So whatever happens here with these three uh, bars uh, will not affect the shape of AC. It will not bend or deform in any way. It will stay the same shape. Now, these three rods, they have different cross sections, different lengths, and they're going to have different forces on them. So they're going to be deforming at different rates. And that's what uh, we need to find first. Once we have that, we're going to apply some trigonometry and we will be able to find how much point F will be displaced. Okay, let's get started. First up, we're going to apply the moment equation and I'm going to use positive direction in this way and we're going to use sum of the moments at point C will be equal to zero and I'm also going to use this direction for positive and I'm going to use the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. This is just uh, simple statics and let's uh, calculate what we have and we're going to be able to find some of these forces. Here it is, I plugged in the information. So the sum of the moment at point C equal to zero. We have a force of six kips, which is right here at EF at a distance of two feet minus the force BA right here times uh, the distance which is at three feet. This is two, this is one. There you go. From here we find force BA, which is force four kips. Now we can switch to the sum of the forces in the y direction and this will help us find the third force that we are missing. Six kips to the right minus four kips, the one that we just found, going to the left and minus force in uh, rod DC, which is up here, which is going to the left also. From here, force DC, we can find it as two kips. Uh, the force in rod EF is what we have given, is six kips, that's the one that matches right there. So, therefore, we have all the forces, and we can go ahead and start uh, calculating our deflections, our deformations. Here's our axial uh, loading deformation formula, and this is the one we're going to be using. This is why we needed to find the forces. We're going to plug them in here, and therefore we're going to find the deformation of each individual rod. Here I set up my work area for the three rods, rod DC, rod AB, rod EF, and using this formula I'm going to set up each equation. So the deformation in DC equals the force in DC times the length of DC over the cross-sectional area of DC times Young's modulus. Now we have all this information, all we have to do is plug it in and we can find the deformation in our piece DC right here. I'm going to do the same for the rod AB, EF, and let's see what kind of values we're going to find. I went ahead and plugged in and solved uh, all three rods and here's what deformations I found for all three of them. Deformation for DC, deformations for AB and deformation for EF. This, I did the same thing for both of them, what I did up here for rod DC. And now that once we found the three deformations, we can take a look at our structure and see how it deformed. Let's take a look at our deformation at DC. 
and deformation at AB. Out of these two, looks like rod AB stretched longer than rod DC. So I'm going to sketch it again, this uh, drawing, and let's see how it uh, deformed from its original position. So this is my rod AC and the, in its original location, A and C. That's where it was, originally nice and vertical. Now, I'm going to sketch these two deformations. Rod DC, let's say it moved somewhere here, right? This is our my new C location. Rod AB also moved, but whatever this is, it's not not here, it moved further. So I'm going to sketch my new A a bit further than my C because it stretched longer. Okay? So my rod AC now is situated somehow this way. It's not vertical anymore. It was uh, kind of slanted now. And my location F is still here with his with the ring. There you go. That's my new F. Okay? So this is my new setup after everything stretched out and uh, obtained the new equilibrium position. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mark some additional information over here that will help us find our uh, what we are looking for and let's see I'm gonna mark point E this is the original now it's moved all the way over here this is my E prime we also interested in F out here now uh, this length stay the same remember this rod was rigid so it didn't stretch so this is stays two feet this size stays one foot okay let's see like uh, point C is stretched till here and if we come straight down vertically we can mark this point and this distance is the same as up here and this distance we can find this is uh, the deflection of uh, a deformation of rod AB I'm gonna calculate it right here deformation of rod AB minus uh, the deformation of rod DC and this will give me a value of this one which is this distance right here now we're gonna apply this rule from trigonometry similar similar triangles and we're gonna work with this triangle right here this will be our large triangle and this triangle down here I mean up here will be our small triangle so small triangle large triangle okay here it is I wrote up the similar triangle rule the small triangle side 2 which is right here over the big triangle side which comes all the way which is this one comes from here down here okay same thing here the small triangle side which I marked as uh, Delta E prime which will be this one right here and on my big triangle side which will be down here okay I plugged in uh, I solved for the, def the deformation of E this one and plugged in here's my value for it okay but we are not done yet this is not what they, we, they were asking for so what we are interested in is f point f how much did it uh, get displaced from its original location and let's see what uh, will give us this value uh, we have this displacement which is the same as the displacement of rod dc We've calculated it, we have it. Now, we've calculated this deflection right here, right here, we have it. And we also had uh, this rod EF here. We calculated it and we found that it stretched also. So simply summing up these three distances, 
will finally give us our displacement of point F. There it is, I've wrote it down, so deformation, this, sorry, displacement of point F equals the deformation of rod DC plus this little distance that we found right here plus the deformation of rod EF. I'm going to plug in the values and finally get our answer. Values plugged in and displacement of point F 0 0.0113 inches.